OK, so you've got your boat. Now what are you going to do with it? How can you get the best out of this massive investment you've made? You're not a hirer rushing around a ring anymore, so how should you plan your boating? Let's take some look at, look at some of the boating events throughout the year and what a new boater might get out of them. See, every boater has their own favourite canal or stretch of water where you will hear people raving about the Thames, arguing about the best section. Others rate the Kennet Navan, the Shropshire Union, the Grand Union and the Hangochland. The Northern Waters, especially around Skipton, have many fans and there are even those boaters happiest on the urban backwaters of the Birmingham Canal navigations. Of course, if you moor in the southeast, it will be next to impossible to reach the Leeds and Liverpool and return. In a couple of weeks, you can take as a holiday. And the way to get over this is to change your base of operations every year or two. And once you've comfortably explored an area and feel ready for something new, try, try to moor around a two-hour drive from the house, so a reasonable journey on a Friday evening to start a weekend break on the boat. Eventually, of course, you may have to travel further than a couple of hours, uh, but that could be a decade in the future. So when you want to make longer trips, you can always link a two-week holiday with several weekends, perhaps, making a long initial trip and then hopping the boat back to base over several weekends. It may be inevitable that you will try and go too far, too fast in that initial burst of enthusiasm, I would advise against travelling 12 or even 14 hour days non-stop to an amb ambitious fixed schedule. Not only will you return needing a holiday, you'll also miss some of the things that help people fall in love with the waterways. Give yourself time to stop and explore the areas through which the canals and rivers pass. Not only will you find some great little pubs and eating places, you begin to understand the history of the waterways and how they've changed and been changed by the towns and villages of our country. There are so many examples, I, I can only mention a few that impressed me. The, the Shropshire Union and the Hangochland canals are, are some of the most popular in the, in the country. Wonderful scenery and some great canal architecture, but stop and explore and they get even better. Brood has a, a great old-style butcher who makes his own faggots, for instance. At Norbury, you can see the start of the now derelict Newport and Shrewsbury Canal. A walk into Market Drayton will take you to the home of Gingerbread. There's a former nuclear bunker to visit a bit north of the lovely village of Audlam and a mile or two from the canal at Nantwich. You will find a, a Cheshire market town well worth a few hours to explore. In Skipton, you'll find an historic town dominated by its castle overlooking the market. A stroll along the Springs branch of the canal will take you to the back of the castle where limestone was mined and loaded into boats through long chutes. You have to wonder whether the castle would have survived if the landowner hadn't been able to make money by exporting the limestone in his backyard. The Skipton bonus is several great, great pubs serving the uh, local Copper Dragon beer and fish and chip restaurants only surpassed in Hull and possibly Whitby. At the other end of the country, you see a very different aspect of Stratford-upon-Avon if you walk the towpath. This is not the Tudor Stratford that brings foreign tourists and their millions, but industrial Stratford, built to serve the industry, industries that provided work and prosperity before tourism became central to the town's economy. Now, many of the excellent guides will give you an insight into what's just beyond the towpath, so invest in those that cover the area you're planning to explore, and I would suggest buying on survey maps as well to enable you to check out what may be behind the hill. Our waterways take us through the heart of Britain and enable us to explore its nature, its history, its commerce and meet the people who make the communities bordering the water so interesting. Take a drink in the pub or eat in a restaurant and you'll find you're also part of the interest of that place. People will want to know what boating's like, where you're heading, how long you've been doing it and probably 
whether it's cold in winter. There are some landmark places, I suppose, around the waterways. Um, and the, most boaters aim to visit them at some time. I suspect my list may miss places others would have included, but this essentially is a personal thing and influenced by taste. Uh, some are great feats of canal engineering, others are places of interest from the days when the waterways were working and some simply places where you can gain a greater understanding of the system. Let's start with those feats of engineering. Uh, top of my list is the Ponkastichlet Aqueduct on the Llangochlan, the most famous aqueduct in Britain as its longest and highest. It's a World Heritage Site. The Anderton Boat Lift which links the Trent and Mersey with the River Weaver at Northwich in Cheshire. Uh, that claims to have been the first successful boat lift in the world. The experience of travelling 15 metres up or down in those large tanks is one to be savoured. The Barton Swing Bridge on the Bridgewater Canal heading north from Manchester is another tank, this time the only swinging aqueduct in the world. It carries the Bridgewater Canal across the Manchester Ship Canal. And the aqueduct still regularly swings open to let large ships pass underneath. Then there are the lock flights. The Bingley Five Rise and Three Rise on the Leeds and Liverpool Canal are impressive to travel through. Wide locks that raise the canal over 18 metres in five giant steps. My fascination for Cane Hill locks at Devizes in Wiltshire on the Kennet and Navon comes from having seen them more than three decades ago when they were disused and more in grass than water with the beams climbing a grassy hillside. I can only marvel at the persistence that got them working once more. The double staircase of narrow locks at Foxton in Leicestershire are unique, but for me the Victorian inclined plane off to one side is the real fascination. It's easy to visualise how this one slid boats downhill in just 12 minutes and I remain hopeful of seeing it restored. Others on my list include the newest canal in the country, the new section cut across the front of the Liver building in Liverpool to give canals, canal vessels access to the restored docks. Limehouse docks in the east end of London, <clears throat> now restored as a destination for boaters and a route out onto the Thames, has echoes of wartime bravery by working boatmen, Glasson Dock at the other end of the country on the Lancaster Canal is another of those unusual places where the inland waterways link with the sea and the cries of seabirds and the rattle of rigging give a taste of a different watery world. Finally, canals are about industry and along, the wonderful, along with the wonderful museums at Ellesmere Port and Gloucester Dock and Stoke Bruin, which help us understand canals, I would add the Black Country Living Museum at Dudley, where the reality of a working boat dock in the industrial Midlands is brought to life. You can get a grip on how canals used to be, and then you'll start to enjoy and understand the gaunt and crumbling mills you pass as you boat through Burnley or Blackburn, and the gaping wastelands of Tipton or Warsaw, where the pits power stations and metalworks have all now been pulled down and are being built over with houses. Your boat gives you access to all those lovely places. Make the best of it.